We previously discussed the idea of matrix transformations, link in the description. We saw how by multiplying a vector x by a matrix A, we could view that matrix as a transformation which takes us from one Euclidean space to another. We also saw that these matrix transformations satisfy what are called linearity properties, and so these matrix transformations belong to a broader class of things called linear transformations. Now, when we were discussing transformations from Rm to Rn, our standard Euclidean spaces, every linear transformation is also a matrix transformation. They're one and the same. So it wasn't totally clear that the matrix transformations were actually just a special type of linear transformation. But now we've seen many vector spaces besides standard Euclidean space, and so we're prepared to discuss general linear transformations, which could take us from any one vector space to another. In this video, we'll introduce linear transformations in general, some of their basic properties, and we'll look at many examples and non-examples. There are chapters, so you can skip around as you please. The definition should be no surprise from our previous discussions of matrix transformations. If T is a transformation transformation from a vector space V to a vector space W, then T is called a linear transformation from V to W if the linearity properties hold for all vectors U and V in the vector space V and for all scalars K. Those linearity properties are the homogeneity property so that the transformation of a scalar multiple of a vector should be the scalar multiple of that vector's image, so you can pull the scalar out of the transformation. And the other property that must be satisfied is the additivity property, so the transformation or image of a sum of vectors should be the sum of their images. In the case where the domain and codomain are equal, so that v is equal to w, then we could say that the linear transformation t is a linear operator on the vector space v. And remember, the difference between this and what we've previously discussed is that now the domain and codomain of the transformation could be any vector space, not just Rn. Now, as we've seen before, these linearity properties lead to this nice property, the image of a linear combination of vectors in the domain is equal to the linear combination of the images in the codomain. Said another way, if we're putting a linear combination of vectors through this linear transformation, we could apply the additivity property to split this transformation across the sum, and then we could apply the homogeneity property to each term to take the scalar out. And so hopefully you can see how when we transform this linear combination, we get the linear combination of those transformed vectors. Here are a few more basic properties worth mentioning. If T is a linear transformation from a vector space V to a vector space W, then the image of the zero vector in V is the zero vector in W. Note that this is the zero vector in V, this is the zero vector in W. So they're not necessarily the same, but certainly the image of the zero vector in one vector space under a linear transformation has to be the zero vector in that other vector space. Also, just like we can split a transformation across addition, we can split a transformation across subtraction. So the image of u minus v is the image of u minus the image of v. And finally, just like we can pull out a scalar, we can pull out a negative. So the image of negative v is negative t of v. We could prove the first property using the homogeneity property. So imagine we take the transformation of zero times any vector v. We know that we can pull the scalar zero out of this transformation and get zero times the transformation of v. But of course, zero times anything is equal to zero. And the thing we started with, the transformation of zero times v, that of course has to be the same as t of zero, because zero times v is zero. And so we see that the image of the zero vector is the zero vector. We can prove property B by applying the additivity property and the homogeneity property, but first we just need to split this subtraction, u minus v, into u plus the scalar negative one times that vector v. 
Now we can split this transformation across the addition and then apply the homogeneity property. Splitting it across the addition, we get t of u plus t of negative 1 times v, but let's just take that negative 1 out. So it's t plus negative 1 times the image of v. And then, of course, plus negative 1 times the image of v, that's the same as just minus t of v. And then the third property, that the image of a vector's inverse is the inverse of the vector's image. We can prove that by setting u equal to 0 in property b, and then applying property a. So we would have t of 0 minus v. By property b, that's equal to t of 0 minus t of v. And then, of course, by property A, the image of 0 is 0, so this just becomes 0 minus t of v. And, of course, we don't really have to write that 0. These basic properties of linear transformations, among other things, can make for a useful and quick way to determine that something isn't a linear transformation. For example, if a transformation doesn't map 0 to 0, can't be a linear transformation. We'll have many more interesting concepts and surprising theorems to discuss in subsequent lectures, but for the rest of this one, we're going to look at some more examples and non-examples of linear transformations to make sure we've got that definition down solid. As we said before, every matrix transformation is an example of a linear transformation. In particular, these are the linear transformations from Rm to Rn. All of those are matrix transformations. For example, we could consider a matrix transformation from R squared to R squared. Each matrix transformation is defined, of course, by a matrix, which is used to multiply each vector in the domain, sending it to a vector in the codomain. In this case, if our 2 by 2 matrix is this one here, then we could write out this transformation as an equation like this. The first column in our standard matrix for this transformation is 1, 1, and that tells us that the first component, u, is going to be mapped to 1, u, plus 1v. The second column in the standard matrix is 1, negative 2, which tells us the second component, v, in an input vector, is going to be mapped to 1 times u, minus 2 times v. I'm not going to verify the linearity properties for this particular matrix transformation, since that should be familiar territory. Let's see a less familiar example. The zero transformation is a transformation which can be applied to vector spaces in general, and it is a linear transformation. If v and w are any two vector spaces, and they can be distinct, then the transformation from v to w, defined like this, it's a transformation that takes every vector from v and maps it to the zero vector in w. This is called the zero transformation, and it is certainly a linear transformation, which we can verify. First, the homogeneity property. The image of a scalar multiple of a vector u, by definition of the transformation, is zero. But we know that's the same as k times zero but zero is the same as the image of just u without the scalar, which means that k times zero is the same as k times the image of u. So indeed, the image of any scalar multiple of a vector is the same as the scalar multiple of that vector's image. We can pull scalars out of the transformation, so the zero transformation satisfies the homogeneity property. Next, the additivity property. The image of any sum u plus v, by definition of the transformation, is equal to the zero vector. Of course, zero is the same as zero plus zero, and each of these zeros is the same as the image of u and the image of v, since the image of every vector is just zero. And so clearly, we can split this transformation across addition. It satisfies the additivity property, and so indeed the zero transformation is a linear transformation between vector spaces. Another interesting example is dilation and contraction. This is like stretching and shrinking a vector space. Let v be a vector space and c be a scalar. Then the transformation which sends v to v 
defined like this. The image of each vector is just that vector times this fixed scalar C. This is what we would call a linear operator on V. It's a linear operator because it's a linear transformation and its domain and codomain are the same. So it's operating just on that vector space V. We can see that this sort of transformation satisfies the homogeneity property because the image of a scalar K times a vector U by definition of the transformation is that fixed scalar C times KU. But then of course the order of the scalars does not matter. We could swap those. So K times CU. But then C times U is by definition the image of U. And so you see how we were able to pull the scalar out of the transformation. Since we can pull scalars out of this transformation, we see that indeed it satisfies the homogeneity property. As for the additivity property, the image of U plus V by definition of the transformation is that fixed scalar C times u plus v, but then by the distributive property, that's equal to c times u plus c times v. And of course, c times u is the image of u, and c times v is the image of v. And so we see that this transformation splits across addition. The image of u plus v is the sum of u and v's individual images. So this is indeed a linear transformation. In the case where that fixed scalar c is greater than zero and less than one, we say that t is a contraction of the vector space v. It is, in effect, shrinking all of the vectors. On the other hand, if c is greater than one, we say that t is a dilation of v. It is stretching all of the vectors. Often, we regard vector spaces as having an operation called an inner product, and we call these inner product spaces. Links in the description to my lessons on those. Indeed, we can define a linear transformation as well that involves an inner product. Let v0 be a fixed vector in a real inner product space v. Then the transformation, which takes each vector from v and maps it to its inner product with that fixed vector v0, this would be a real number, this inner product, that is a linear transformation. Let's see that it satisfies the properties. The image of a scalar k times a vector u, by definition of the transformation, is the inner product of k times u with that fixed vector v0. By familiar properties of inner products, we could take that k right out of the first slot and have k times the inner product of u with v0, which of course is k times the image of u. And so we see this satisfies the homogeneity property. Similarly, properties of inner products will help us verify the additivity property. The image of u plus v, by definition, is the inner product of u plus v with that fixed vector v0. But then by the additivity property of of inner products, we can split this inner product across that addition in the first slot and write it as the inner product of u with v0 plus the inner product of v with v0. These, of course, are the individual images of u and v under this transformation. Hence, we see that we can split the image of a sum into the sum of the images. And so the additivity is satisfied, and this is indeed an example of a linear transformation. One more example before we jump into a couple of non-examples is a linear transformation with matrices. We've previously regarded various sets of matrices as vector space and this is an example of a linear transformation on those spaces. The transformation which takes each M by N matrix M and sends it to its transpose, which is an N by M matrix, this is a linear transformation. Said more briefly, with fewer Ns and Ms, the transpose operator can be viewed as a linear transformation. The properties are trivial to verify if you're familiar with the properties of the transpose. The image of K times A, by definition, is K times A transpose, but then that's the same as K times A transpose, which is K times A's image under this transformation, and so homogeneity is satisfied. The image of a sum of matrices under this transformation is the transpose of the sum, and we've previously verified, link in the description, that the transpose of a sum of vectors is the sum of their transposes, and so indeed we can split this image of a sum into the sum of the images. So additivity is satisfied, and we see that the transpose is a linear transformation. A very basic non-example would be the sine function. If we let t be the transformation that maps each real number x to sine of x, 
That's certainly not a linear transformation because, for example, the additivity property is not satisfied. In general, sine of a sum of two real numbers is not the sum of the signs of those real numbers, so t cannot possibly be a linear operator on the real numbers. For a particular counterexample to the additivity property, sine of pi over 2 plus pi over 2 is not equal to sine of pi over 2 plus sine of pi over 2. Sine of pi over 2 plus pi over 2 is sine of pi, which is 0, whereas sine of pi over 2 is 1. So this guy on the right is actually equal to 1 plus 1 which is 2, so clearly this is not a linear transformation. A more interesting example is translation. Letting v be a real inner product space, and letting v0 be a fixed non-zero vector in v, the transformation t, which maps each vector v to its sum with that fixed vector v0, this is not a linear transformation, because, for example, t of 0 by definition, is equal to 0 plus v0. But of course, we took v0 to be non-zero, so 0 plus v0 is not 0. And so the image of the 0 vector here is not the 0 vector. We know that every linear transformation maps 0 onto 0. Since this transformation does not map 0 to 0, we see that it cannot be a linear transformation. This is a little picture of what's happening, letting this line represent some vectors in our inner product space. This vector here is v0, and so what's happening is that each point on the line is getting shifted in the direction and magnitude of v0. Everything's being shifted up in the picture, and so you can see clearly that 0 is not getting mapped to 0. It's getting mapped to v0, which we specifically took to be non-zero. Since this uniform translation of the vector space takes the 0 vector away from the 0 vector, it's not a linear transformation. But those are some non-examples, examples, and interesting properties of linear transformations in general on a variety of vector spaces. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions, and be sure to check out my linear algebra course and linear algebra exercises playlists in the description for more. If you find my videos helpful, please consider supporting what I do by joining Wrath of Math as a channel member. You can get early and exclusive access to additional videos, and if you join at the premium tier or above, you can access the lecture notes used in my courses. Thanks for watching. Audio.